Hello, and welcome to Emmanuel Church's online worship service. My name is Bailey Talsma, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for this time of worship and praise. Could you take a moment right now to invite those you know to this worship service? We want to get and stay connected with you because you matter to us. Would you consider letting us know that you're joining us by filling out the friendship folder? This allows us to get to know you and you may have questions or ideas and we'd love to get you plugged in so that you can make a difference. You can find the link to the friendship folder in the video description or you can hit the connect button in the public chat feature. Today, the second episode of Table Talks is airing on ERCLA.tv. This is where the leaders of Emmanuel sit down and have an engaging conversation, answering the questions that you have for them. And you don't wanna miss it. You can watch today at 5 p.m. on ERCLA.tv. And you can submit your questions at any time to info at erc.la or through direct message on any of our social media platforms for the next episode. Just a reminder, next week we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper, so please prepare your elements. Also, if you're struggling with anxiety and would like to journey with other women to discover biblical insight on how we can experience peace and joy, let us know that you're interested by contacting Jody Gross. And one of the many ways that we worship God is with the giving of our tithes and offerings. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. You can give by going to erc.la forward slash give, by hitting the give icon on our app or by mail. And if you're watching on ercla.tv, you can either hit give in the chat feature or click give in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Our call to worship today comes from Psalms 47, one through two. Clap your hands, all you nations, shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. Let's worship our Lord together. Now let's sing together. Worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet, cause He has done great things. And see what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. Chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Say you've been faithful.
top of it all Hallelujah God Unshakable Hallelujah You have done great things Yes you have And Hallelujah God Above it all Verse 17 to 18 says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness, even when we're not faithful. And Lord, we just dedicate this song to you because of who you are and who you continue to be in our lives. We praise in your name. She never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands The moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God
Father, we thank you for who you are. And thank you that you love us just because we are yours. We are your children. And Lord, no, it doesn't matter what rules we've broken, how, how complicated the laws are in this world that we have to follow. You are still gracious and you still love us, God. And I pray, Father, that as we listen to this sermon, that we would just absorb the pastor's words, Lord, and that you would bless the words of our pastor, God, for it to just flow out of his mouth and into our hearts. May it speak to us, Father. In your name, amen. Welcome. We are so glad you're here uh, joining us on ERCLA.tv or on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, however you're with us, we are glad that you're with us today. It's Reformation Sunday. Uh, we're celebrating that uh, we're a church that's reformed and ever reforming according to the Word of God. One of the things we celebrate, there's these things called the solas, but one of the solas is called Scripture Alone. And so today we're going to let the Scriptures uh, be celebrated in this sense, it's also pre-election Sunday, uh, a big day in our country. And before that big day, like what does a pastor say? And what I'm gonna say is I'm just gonna quote the scriptures. I'm gonna quote the scriptures right in line with what we were going to preach through the Sermon on the Mount, because it's very applicable uh, for pre-election Sunday, Reformation Sunday. Uh, here's, as an election's coming, some people say, how should I pray? Uh, Another question can be, uh, some people are asking, how do I invest? A third question is, what's my next step? There's an election coming. I'd like to give you this outline for today. Would you pray the kingdom prayer? Would you store up kingdom shares? And would you seek the kingdom and have one main care? This is what you would pray, how you would invest. Uh, this would be your next step. Uh, the Bible, it's really interesting, uh, as we're right now in election time. Uh, when the Bible, the New Testament was being written, when Jesus lived, there was a guy named Herod. And Herod, go look up Herod, and you'll think, whoa, that was during Jesus' time. But Herod's not the main point. Jesus Christ becomes the main point. And when Jesus dies and rises again, and people like Paul become the main deal speaking the New Testament to us, there's a guy named Caligula running Rome, running the, the known world. Go look up Caligula, and you'll go, whoa. And then when he dies, a little bit later, a guy named Nero is running things. And you'll go, my goodness, this is crazy. Where we're at in our country, in terms of there being, this is nothing like what they were dealing with back in the day. And so we have an opportunity to pray and vote. And beyond that, though, to turn and say, how do I live in this time? And I'd like to share this. We're being challenged and called to trust God and his sovereignty. Back in the day, when all of these people were the lead headlines, uh, do you know that Rome ruled the world and everybody spoke the Greek language? God was at work. And Roman roads went around the entire Mediterranean. You could travel safely around the whole Mediterranean. God was at work. God's at work right now. We're going to trust him the day before the election and the day after the election. In Acts chapter 8, a persecution breaks out and the church is scattered. The church gets persecuted and God's at work. As the church gets scattered, they go and gossip the gospel everywhere, and the gospel starts going around the world. Let's trust God right now. Let's step into the Sermon on the Mount. Let's let Jesus give us the next three pericopes, the next three little sections, and let's apply it to our lives right now. So again, here's the outline, the Sunday before the election. Could we pray the kingdom prayer? Could we store up kingdom shares? And could we seek the kingdom and have just one main care? Here's the word of God. I'm going to just first quote to you a prayer that you know. What prayer should we pray, Jesus? How about this prayer? This is right from the Sermon on the Mount. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
Here's the prayer. So how do we pray right now? Election's coming. Pray the Lord's Prayer. Pray the kingdom prayer. And then our passage goes on, and it says this from Matthew 6, going on, uh, beginning at verse 19. It says this, Don't store up for yourselves treasures here on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, church, there your heart will be also. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about, what you're, about your life, what you'll eat, what you'll drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't know, they don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God so clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not also much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So don't worry, don't worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. Election day is coming. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. People of God, this is the word of God. So let's walk through the Sermon on the Mount, right? Here we go. Pray and live the kingdom prayer. Pray this. We're heading into the election day and the day after. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done right here. Father, give us our daily bread. Father, forgive us our sins. Father, deliver us. Father, do you know what would be an awesome thing for race relations? For us to understand our Father. Pray the prayer and live it out. Your will be done. Well, what's, what's his will? Well, we've been reading the Sermon on the Mount. And right before it and in the Sermon on the Mount, you to repent, and you and I repent of our sins, walk in the Holy Spirit, then going on, be merciful, be pure in heart, be a peacemaker. We're walking through the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, what else does it say? Uh, don't murder, not even with your tongue, and don't harbor anger toward people who have the other view than you. Don't commit adultery. Don't no longer be lusting. Can we bring healing to our land by living out our marriage vows and living holy? Uh, love your enemies. Uh, what's the will of God? Sermon on the Mount. What's the kingdom of God? Sermon on the Mount. Love your enemies. Turn the other cheek. Give them a second cloak. Pray for them. Huh. How do I live in this pre-election and the day after election time? Pray the kingdom. Live the kingdom. And us. Give us bread. Give us deliverance. I want to bless Emmanuel Church. Thank you for feeding the hungry. Give us bread. Thank you for giving clothing to people at our Project Hope. Would you feed the hungry? Would you clothe the naked, like Matthew 25 says? Thank you for planting churches that are doing the exact same thing. Thank you for living this out. Your kingdom come, your will be done. So you and I get to make one vote. We should pray, we should vote. After we pray and we vote, and there's many things for us to vote about, we then move to doing his will. Here's what I've looked at for myself. You know a big thing of his will? Huge, giant, go make disciples. So I'm going to talk about me just for a moment of how I've had to step in. How about you? In this COVID-19 season, election season, race division season, go make disciples. So on Sunday night, I help make disciples from a 14-year-old to an 84-year-old. We're together. On Tuesday night, we have young adults in our church. Maybe I should disciple them along with other people. So I meet with young adults, even though my hair is gray. Go make disciples, the will of God. On Thursday night, I have a group at, at 8 o'clock that I meet with, and we have people who their background would be Democrat and their background would be Republican. We don't tell people, you have to be circumcised to join our church. You have to be a Republican. You have to be a Democrat to join our church. Come join us. This is now our book. And I watch guys it's like on Zoom. You can watch their faces. And I'm watching us make our main problems be the main issues of our own personal lives and having people from different backgrounds uniting and even asking questions of the party they come from and saying, 
I'm not sure I believe this anymore because this is now my book. It's changing us. And Thursday night at 7 o'clock, I lead Eastside Paramount in a Bible study and guys who've never been in one. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying I can pray and I can vote. I'm not sure my vote is going to change America. My discipling people on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, uh, it's actually God is using that to change lives. This past week, I went to a single mom's home and her three sons that I love. And I brought with me a man from our church who said, I will help mentor those three sons. 19, 14, 11, dad's not in the picture. I think I was doing the kingdom. I think I was praying the kingdom when I introduced them. I did my little bit. Now the man, he's now going to be a father figure to those great young men that need a father figure. What are you doing this election season? I hope you pray. I hope you step in and vote. There's many things to vote about. More importantly, would you pray the kingdom prayer and would you live it? We just go through our text. And so uh, what do I do? Pray the prayer. Pray the kingdom prayer. Here's the next thing. How should I invest? Because depending if this person wins or that person wins, what's going to happen with my investments? Jesus talks to us. And he says, store up kingdom shares. Here's what he says. Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't destroy, where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Uh, don't make your focus storing up treasure on earth, Ken. Don't make your focus that, but Ken, do make your focus storing up treasures in heaven. Now, let me take the whole Bible with you a second. Aren't we supposed to work? Yeah, we are. Uh, the Bible says, go look at the ants, you sluggard. Don't be a sluggard. Look at the ants. They work, and they set things up that they are provided for later. The Bible turns and says, you need to work, and you should be able to provide for your family. First Timothy, if someone doesn't take care of their own extended family and their own immediate family, they're worse than a pagan. Okay, so I'm supposed to work and be able to provide for my family. Proverbs says this, <clears throat> a good man, a good person, leaves an inheritance for their children's children. Oh, so there is a place to invest and work hard and save so I can pass something on. But that's not my treasure. That's not my main focus. Store up treasures in heaven. When you feed the hungry, you feed Jesus, treasures in heaven. When you feed, when you give the thirsty drink and you give the naked clothes and you welcome the stranger in and you give a cup of cold water, and you're the, the rich man, and Jesus says, sell what you have, follow me, and you'll have treasure in heaven. You'll store up treasure in heaven. The Bible tells us that we're saved by what Jesus does and us repenting and believing. But when we do follow Jesus, it travels. It goes into the age that is coming, the age to come in heaven. Uh, application, two weeks ago, we are going through the Sermon on the Mountains, and Jesus said, give to the needy. After the sermon was done, my father, who's 90, and mother, 88, and my uh, nephew, Clark, who has little children, ages 6, 4, 2, and a little baby, the 6-year-old and 4-year-old, uh, grandpa and grandma, asked me to go to the bank and get them a whole bunch of dimes. And so great-grandpa and grandma have dimes, so when great-grandchildren come over to rake leaves or just do whatever little task to be done, they get paid a dollar. And the kids are excited because one dime goes to the Lord and one dime goes to their savings and they can do what they want with the 80 cents. And they're teaching them about people who begin investing in the kingdom that is coming. I uh, have a book that I'm reading right now. It's called Practicing the King's Economy, Honoring Jesus and How We Work, Earn, Spend, Save, and Give. And I read an article in there about a prison. It's called uh, number 25 in Argentina. It's, to enter number 25 prison, you need to have killed two people. You have to have at least two murders to enter number 25. And here's the other unique thing about number 25. The prison now has no violence because Christianity has broke out in the prison. And as Christianity has broken out, it's a seminary training ground. They raise up pastors. They, they disciple and train people. And in the prison, uh, in Argentina, they don't supply you with your food and clothes. Either your loved ones do, or you wear the pair of underwear you've got, and you never get, that's all you got. And there you go. So in prison number 25, number 25, when my loved ones give me clothes and food, 
the Christian prisoners turn and they give one-third, not one-tenth, one-third to the tithe room so that they can turn and share that with the prisoners who have family members that aren't reaching out to them at all. And these same prisoners, they're in prison, many of them for life. They make cakes and food for the slum kids about four miles from the prison. And while the book was being written, the guy just turned and said they had 24 cakes going to the slum kids. They're storing up treasures in heaven as they do this. In this book that I just read, there's a, a family called the Barnetts. I'm not sure what their business is. They became, well, they, the business became very wealthy, and here's what they said. We decided many, many years ago that we wouldn't live according to our wealth, but we would keep the same standard of living. We would pay our employees close to what we were making. They began giving out for 25 straight years. They had 25% growth every year. They were giving out $1 million a month to Christian charities. $1 million a month for over 20 years until they gave the company to the nonprofit that they were supporting. And they turned and just shared, we have enough to live. And it's such a joy to be investing in God's kingdom, storing up treasures in heaven. Are they provided for here? Yep. Have they provided for their family? Yep. But they're storing up treasures in heaven. Just a, a closing story on this. Uh, my father and mother love to give. And they didn't know uh, that I took this picture. But uh, recently, my dad turned 90. And as he turned 90, we asked the church, would you like to give to the Leadership Development Fund? Harold Corver has given like crazy and asked other generous people to give. Thank you, Emmanuel. You just gave $100,000 to the Leadership Development, Harold and Shirley Corver Leadership Development Fund, which isn't for them. It's for future pastors, future young leaders. There's a picture I think that you might be seeing. In the picture, my dad is... Uh, got his thank you notes. And I walked in, and my dad right now is not walking as well as he did. And I said, Dad, would you like me to wheel you out to the backyard so you can enjoy the fresh air? No, I can't right now. I got things to do. So I go off to the side to watch him. He doesn't know I'm taking the picture. He's writing thank you notes to the people who've given to the fund. My dad is finding joy in investing in the kingdom to come. How do I invest? There's an election. There's a big election coming. Yeah, how do I invest? Well, uh, how about you invest in the kingdom? Jesus calls us to that. And then the last point of this sermon, seek the kingdom and have one main care. What, what's my next step? There's going to be an election. What's my first step? Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Have one main care. We live in a time of high anxiety. Uh, there's a class at Emmanuel that Jody Grass leads. If you'd like to be helped with anxiety, we'd love to walk with you. You can reach out to the church. Having said that, anxiety is not new today. It was going on back in the day, right? And Jesus says, I tell you, don't worry. Don't worry about your, your life. Don't worry about your clothing. Don't, don't worry about your food. Don't be worrying about that. Now, we do know from the Bible that we're to work and we're to provide for ourselves, but don't be worrying. Aren't you more important than the birds? The Lord feeds the birds. Aren't you more important than the lilies? God clothes them beautifully. So don't Worry, worry, worry about what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. Don't be like a panicked person. God takes care of the birds. Seek first the kingdom. He takes care of the lilies. Seek first the kingdom. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Seek first the kingdom. Do do the work you're supposed to do. Do think about tomorrow and providing for your family. But don't panic. Seek first the kingdom. I'm watching people in our church do this. I got a guy that I went to high school with, and he has always been a big personality. I'm just watching him rise up to be a kingdom of God man. He sends out scriptures each day. He's making sure that the hungry people are being fed. He's helping there be safety in the city of Bellflower. He's helping the Compton Initiative keep doing its work. And he's filled with joy and he's not living worried right now. There's an election. He's seeking the kingdom. There's a lady in our church that she's not Filipino. Um, she's Anglo. Uh, but she now is leading a Bible study for Filipino women from around the world. I think she's got 30 ladies in a Bible study. She's being a part of the kingdom. She's not panicked about the election. She's a part of the kingdom. And she asked people three questions. What did you get out of the sermon that you heard? How did you follow the Holy Spirit this week? What's a word from scripture that spoke to you? And she says, I don't even know how I became the leader of this group, 
but I'm now leading. She's living in the kingdom. Oh, and, and seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. What does that mean? Seek the kingdom and his righteousness. Well, first, you need to become righteous. How? By repenting of your sin and believing in Jesus. Paul said, I told Jews and Gentiles they must repent and turn from their sins and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. How do I become righteous? By repenting and believing in Jesus and having his righteousness put on me. But now that I'm called righteous by what Jesus has done, now I'm called to live out the righteousness of this passage that I'm reading. And the Bible turns and says, don't murder. There's an election coming up. And the Bible says, don't murder, but don't even be angry. In fact, love your enemies. One young lady in our church, this is her opinion. Listen to, there's, there's for sure some real wisdom here. She turned and she made this comment. She says, I'm not so worried about what each person that I know is voting. I'm extremely concerned how they're voting. I'm extremely concerned with how they treat people who vote different than them. The Bible says do not murder. Don't murder people with your tongue. Love your enemies. Seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, that you would be righteous. Our, our Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the peacemakers. There's an election coming. There's going to be the day after the election. Blessed are the peacemakers. Well, that's righteousness. And we would help people stay united. I don't know if it's going to take two, three, or four weeks for us to know who the next president is. Could we be the uniters? And then I've, I have people that I love, and I can watch them on different sides screaming out on social media their, their righteousness. And I love them, and I think, I think better than you screaming at everybody right now is that you would get married. You've been living with that person for five years. I don't know if you should be spending all your time screaming. Why don't you put a ring on and get married? Because the sermon on righteousness, they're a Christian. they call themselves a Christian. They call themselves that. And the Bible says, do not commit adultery. Don't even lust after another woman. Well, get married. Live out his righteousness. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Store up treasures in heaven. Seek his righteousness. You know, I actually paused and thought about this. Like, I have just a little bit of side money, and I thought, like, what, what should I invest that in? My wife and I are seeking to invest in the kingdom. How do you invest here on earth? So I, I got a thought or two, but the bigger thing keeps coming to me, Can keep investing in the kingdom. So how do I pray? How do I pray? Pray the kingdom prayer. How do I invest? Invest in the kingdom. Store up kingdom shares. What's my next step? Seek first the kingdom of God. Have one main care. Don't have to be period. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't have to be panicking. Have one main care. Am I seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness? Everything else I actually need will be added to me. An elder in our church, Mike Bukowicz, said this, and I want to give this as one of the closing things I say today. Elder Mike uh, shared these words. He said, When Herod killed John the Baptist during Jesus Christ's lifetime, he kills John the Baptist because John the Baptist calls out Herod's immorality. Jesus Christ could have risen up and said, power struggle right now. I'm coming at you, Herod, and I got the power to take you out. Jesus went a different way. Jesus went and he preached the Sermon on the Mount, which we're quoting to you. And he began healing the sick and feeding the hungry and kicking out the demons and letting the lost and the sinners know you're welcome to join my kingdom. He didn't put on a power show. He went to the cross and he died for the Democrats and Republicans and independents and the people in the other nations. He rose from the dead and gave his Holy Spirit to us. He didn't put on a power show in the worldly way. He put on a spiritual power show and died for our sins and rose from the dead that we might be changed and that we might be an unexplainable church that loves people who have a completely different view than us but together we say, this is now our book. I wonder how God's calling me to change by this book. And no matter what happens with the election, don't panic. There was a Red Sea. God got them through. They were in the wilderness. God fed them. When Jesus dies on the cross, oh my goodness, Jesus is dying. He rises again. The Christians get put in prison. God writes the New Testament out of the prisons. 
They're going to martyr the Christians. They did, and the gospel went out. We're going to persecute the Christians. Everybody's going to go preach the gospel. So I have thoughts about the election. I have concerns. And Jesus tells me, Ken, would you have one main concern? Have one main concern. Seek first the kingdom of God, Ken, and his righteousness. Everything else will be added to you. So what's your prayer? Pray the Lord's Prayer. How do you invest? Invest in the kingdom of God. What's your next step? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything else will be added to you. Let's live like Christians. Let's pray. Let's vote. Could we be different than the world and be Christ followers? Let's pray. Lord, we pray that you'd speak to our hearts right now in silence of what you're wanting us to take steps in. Would you show us how we're to pray, the step we're to take, how we're to invest, how we're to seek you? What, what, what have you laid on our hearts? Would you show us now, Lord, in silence? Lord, I pray for us that we would pray and live your Lord's prayer, your kingdom prayer. I pray right now for us that we would store up kingdom shares, kingdom treasures. And I pray right now for us, Lord, we would seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, and we would live righteously, differently. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I'd like to give a blessing to you if you'd be so open to opening your hands, I'd like to pray a blessing over you as you're getting ready to go follow Jesus in a divided world, being a uniter. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the powerful support of fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen, and God bless you. Praise God from whom all Bless you.